Okay. Yeah. 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 Just need to stop that kick drum because it's getting on my nerves. Okay. Um, yeah, so we work in a stream live, but um, I realised I've got the time zone wrong. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to record it and then exactly in an hour from now we'll stream it. It'll just be a very long time delay, but it's fine. Um, yeah. Uh, Mariah, you probably know. Um, I'm Alex. Uh, um, I usually do live coding of music, but at the moment um, I'm getting into live coding of textiles. So this is a warp-weighted loom. This is one made earlier with some students in Berlin. Um, so this is a device based on an ancient design of a loom called a warp-weighted loom, where the tension in the warp, that's the threads going down, mm. comes from weights here. Um, and then uh, I can set up bits of code on my computer. You're welcome to look over my shoulder if you're curious at any point. Um, and uh, that will control the threads. For example, if I do this. Oh, hang on. That's not working. So. That was weird. Okay. Um, okay, so then these come forward um, insert the weft through uh, here and then then you start getting textile emerging. So this isn't a very practical loom, it's very small, but it's just for investigating patterns and things. Um, because computers are all about patterns, and this is just a nice extension of that. Um, I won't talk anymore, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you'd like to say about what you've done to it, Mara? Um Well, then Alex asked, like, well, can you make sound like <laughs> this? Uh, so I was like, sure. Um, but... So I put some microphones onto this machine. So I will sample that and start working with that as the sound material. Okay. That's basically what I'm gonna do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how I do that will appear here. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm not projecting my screen, um, but you can come and look at any point if you're yeah. curious, as I say. And I think Alex needs some help to actually put the, in Dutch you say the, the spool, like through, so. Oh yeah, you can join in. So you can help. Yeah. It doesn't make much sound. It's soft. The wool is soft. The, the wool is soft, yeah, but the solenoids are really loud. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So this we have had absolutely <coughs> no time for practice or rehearsal. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, no. <laughs> completely uh, live. Yeah. Um, okay. At some point later on, I might also make some live coded music to go with it. But This is just doing the simplest kind of weave, the tabby weave, which is just every thread that goes up and down. But I'll be exploring other structures later. But because I'm changing also the colour of the thread that's going across and down, it's coming out sort of stripy, which is a surprise.
I made this loom last week, by the way, so I'm still learning how to use it. These threads should not be like that, never mind. <laughs> I think I'll change the structure. Sand. No. It's it's very soft, so I'm uh, trying okay. to look wide at this. Let's see if I can fix it. That's not right. You only get two seconds to uh, catch the threads. Yeah. 
Ja, die van de trilling op van het van het ding zelf.
So you can see the structure of the weed here, um, and that's the code for describing it. And then each time I run next, I can go down to the next row. Decide which thread to pass. And did you design it yourself completely? Yes. Yeah, just managed to get it working last week. Mm -hmm. So this is this is kind of the first proper piece I've ever woven with it. So mm -hmm. I've only used it in a workshop with students, um, which I did two days ago, mm -hmm. so it's all new. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, when, once I've got it nice, working nicely, I'll share the design. So, because it's all laser cut, mm -hmm. you can get access to a laser cutter or yeah. somewhere you know, to make things more good. No, I like the idea of it being small because it's not really for producing textiles, but just for exploring the patterns really. So it's more of a more of an art machine than a practical device. But actually, it's pretty fast making this. <laughs> So maybe if I just added twice as many, it could actually be useful as a scan. So yeah, maybe it'd be useful for... But I like the idea of it being a kind of desktop device. So it's really neat, really bigger. You can see where the structures change as a result. That started off with a really simple weave and then this was... Diagonal one, kill, and now it's looking a bit more complicated. Do you want to have a go? Sure. <laughs> I'll just. Um, one thing I need to do is move it up because I'm starting to run out of threads. So. Building it into uh, industrial mm -hmm. techno. <laughs> yeah, have you ever been in a weavery? In a, in a big weaving. Yeah, in, in a kind of factory. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, have it's to, like in a, mu a sort of uh, working museum I've been in. Yeah. Have you? Yeah, in, in Germany just off the border. Yeah. In Nijmegen, I would say. Yeah. I've been in a weavery and we're making uh, all sorts of uh, household textiles. Ah, okay. And they were running as the, the machines uh, still. Yeah. Just uh, as, a, as a museum attraction, maybe. Yeah. Um, but they were still making things. And, uh, the thing is that um, it was uh, the, the, the sounds were extremely dark. Yes. People would get, get deaf after 10 years. Yeah. Working in such a factory. Yeah, really uh, inhumane sort of noise. Yeah. But in the. Uh, Lancashire, where there's, there's a lot of um, yeah, big textile industry in the UK in Lancashire, mm -hmm. and uh, it's really interesting because they clog dancing is very popular. Clog dancing? Yeah. <laughs> what is that? And, um, with the wood, 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 wood and shoes. Okay. Uh, in the Netherlands, yeah. Uh, wooden, uh, they do these dances, mm -hmm. 
where they'd um, imitate the sound and the movement of the weaving machine. Oh, clock mounting. Yeah. <laughs> so it would be women doing it, but it was like um, it sort of moved like robots while making this very loud noise with the clocks. Um, the Dutch is called machinery. Mm-hmm. It sounds like techno, but it was um, before what happened in Detroit. You know, sort of <laughs> industrial. Yeah, this is music. Like late 19th century. Yeah, yeah, I guess so, yeah. yeah. Um, so predating electronic music, but um, still making some industrial noises with the uh, clock dancing. Um, so, uh, yeah. Interesting history. Um, right, getting there. This takes a little while to release extra thread. Um, but luckily, it does make some noise for Mariah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see. Right. Yeah, it's not a fast process weaving. Just a few more to do and then we'll be there. doing lots of prototypes, so I'd make it and then, or make parts of it, and because mm-hmm. um, I've got access to a laser cutter where I live in Sheffield, at Access mm-hmm. Space, so I um, do a lot of things, <laughs> yeah, just kind of trying things out really, because I've never made anything like this before, so mm-hmm. just a uh, project of discovery, but laser cutting is really fast actually, mm-hmm. so you can just make something and just see how it works. And, uh, How did you manage to make a, a knot like that? Oh, this is interesting. Yes, this is actually um, a technique from Japan. Oh, yeah. Um, we have a special kind of braiding called Kumihimo braiding. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was in Japan and visited this um, expert braider called Makiko Shiba. Mm-hmm. And she showed me mm-hmm. this technique, which I'm now adapting for use with weaving. So it's, uh, yeah, certain sort of the pitch you have to do, mm-hmm. and then the, um, and you can kind of do it to release more thread. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice practical way. Of yeah. Um, right. Okay. I think that's good. So there's two weft threads to choose between. Um, I was just alternating between them, but you can choose. <laughs> um, right, so if I do next, then some will come forward and you've got two seconds to grab them. Okay. Yeah. And then pull them towards you. Yeah, and this is called the shed. That's where you can the weft. So once you've done that, you can let go of that, that's good. And then, then, again, yeah. <laughs> I have seen that, yeah, if you look on YouTube, um, you can see uh, people have made balloons with they go.
my jack connection due to all the electricity spikes so I might just use it as um, in manual mode. Yeah. 
And again, what's happening for the people watching the internet uh, is um, this is a loom which I'm controlling with code to make sound for Mariah to use um, as source material for a superfly package, which you can hear the app for.
across your screen, Mariah. Huh? Oh, it's come back, sorry. Good. Good. There is a danger today. Oh, I see. It's not a physical. It's not a technical problem. <laughs> Yeah, we're having some strange interactions between the physical and digital here. So this thing after cycle, this is like your basic 
element of your inner ink and battery. Yeah, so that's the sequence at the start, a bit like Tidal. And the twill will sort of make it. And then you're applying the processes to that, to that list. Yeah. Um, yeah, so every two reverse, four reverse. Has uh, so this been the same genetic pattern the whole morning? No. We've been changing it from time to time. So the idea is it's a live codable loop. Right. Yeah, so we're testing it right at first. We can try. Yeah, and that one's not being incorporated. Um, that's probably a fault of the mechanism. Alright, let's try one more. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Do this one? So you can, you can make more threads by moving it up and then moving those, but I think that's quite a lot of time. So, how much time we got? Eight minutes. Okay. I'll do a bit more musical live coding, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, you can keep going if you want. No, I'm yeah, I'm still going. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Suspiciously in time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Right, <laughs>